Hello, my name is Father Norman Fisher. I'm from the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, I serve right now as the pastor of St. Peter Claver Catholic Church, very dynamic, um, filled church, the Holy Spirit, and uh, just very life-giving, as well as I'm the full-time chaplain of Lexington Catholic High School, a co-ed high school in the Diocese of Lexington. Um, so that's my beginning. What makes this vocation a, a wonderful way to spend my life is um, every day is not the same, um, and I'm very uh, excited about what God has in mind for me. It's, it's very important that each day I connect with God and spend time in prayer um, for me to draw strength in doing His work. I, I definitely have to have that love for Him in the Eucharist. Um, so I get my strength from my relationship with God, which He's, that is obviously how I, I fully responded was my interior relationship with him, but then each day he sends me out, uh, obviously into the fields of Lexington Catholic High School to work with hundreds, over 800 students, uh, discovering his his needs and the brokenness of students' lives, or celebrating his joys in the students' accomplishments. Um, I find myself being there, present with the parishioners and their desire to know holiness and grow as better families um, with a lot of struggles with dysfunctions. Um, so I find myself excited every day. Uh, it gives me great joy to know that God would use this uh, humble servant to you know, bring life to, to the world in a variety of ways, but ne never is the, each day the same. I would say uh, knowing that I was to be a priest came as, at an earlier age, um, and knowing the joy that God wanted, had given to me to share in this, in my vocational journey, or or discerning my calling, or um, it really began as a as a young person, uh, and as an altar boy, a priest came up to me, uh, Father Bill Spaulding, and said after mass, and we were finishing up cleaning the vessels and everything, he said, Norman, you, you're going to be a priest one day, and you're going to take my place. And for some reason, I laughed and chuckled, and I said, what are you talking about, Willis? You know? and, but it stuck. Those seeds were planted, and they were firmly planted. And from that moment on, um, growing up on a farm, if the weather was inclement and we couldn't get to church, we would play, we would have, play church and have our little mass and have um, Kool-Aid and, and vanilla wafers, and we'd stare the Our Father. And uh, my sister would put a napkin on her head. She would be the nun. Um, but we were comfortable playing church. And, and uh, actually, my mother's Filipino. We had a wonderful, rich um, prayer life with devotion to Mary at Blessed Mother. And um, that really fostered that love for Jesus and love for Mary, our mother. Um, but I would say that those seeds planted and growing up and maturing, my mother was always um, involved with serving others and bringing food to the poor. My father, growing up on the farm, we always had an opportunity to help a neighbor, lend a, he lend a helping hand and not expect anything in return. Um, I recall there's many vocational Sundays where I was asked to uh, come to a vocational dinner and not only was the meal good but the conversation, the ideas uh, were opening my, those seeds, growing, nurturing them a little bit more. Uh, and come to find out, fast forwarding, I did get a chance to enter in the seminary and apply for the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. After getting accepted, Father Bill Spotting was still part of my life. Uh, and as I would be ordained as a deacon, um, Father Bill Spotting came to my deacon ordination, but his health had deteriorated. Uh, he had developed Parkinson's, so he forgot names, he forgot people. But for some reason, when I would visit him, when on my uh, my breaks, my summer breaks, uh, I would go visit him. He never forgot my name when he was at the nursing home. Uh, he did come to my deacon ordination and he, gave, he said, this box is for you. I was just so shocked that he came because of his health, but he made it. And I, I put the box down, this big de black dusty box, and he said, no, I want you to open it. I said, okay. So I pick up the, the old black dusty box and I unlatch it. And he, as I pull out this chalice, he says, that was my chalice of 50 years. I want you to have it. Mm -hmm. And so it was like this chariots of fire moment, this rite of passage. And would you know, um, there was a transitional diaconate. So six months prior to my preordination, his health got even worse. Um, but on the week of my ordination, he actually passed on to eternal life. And so I celebrated his family with his family, 
his life and, and buried him. Um, but also, I knew at that point at my ordination ceremony that during the Litany of Saints, I could really feel like he was watching me. And um, he had passed on what he saw in me when I never saw him myself. And, of course, I never really saw any African-American priests or religious or bishops or nuns or anything until I was in high school. So I really thank him and credit him for seeing the gift of God's love in me and knowing that it would be a gift to share. And I guess that's why no matter what I go through, I have a joy because I know God believes in me. He's shown that to me through someone who is totally not like me. Uh, and now I can help so many other people who are not like myself, um, but draw us into a common oneness in, in God's Spirit. Uh, through the sacraments, through prayer, through song, through anything we can imagine, we're all together. So, um, Right now, my present ministry, um, I do serve at the only black, historically black Catholic church in the Diocese of Lexington, uh, but it's very multicultural at this point and very integrated. There are um, probably over 160 families in my parish, and I would say over 60% are African American, but we have a lot of, of Africans and um, Anglos and uh, just a variety, good variety uh, that love to say amen and, and praise the Lord. I think uh, with my family that we had a lot of devotions. We had a lot of, obviously, um, gifts of prayer, uh, with the Virgin Mary and Hail Mary, rosaries, obviously, week, week, each night during the week, um, Mass, obviously, and on weekends and holy days. Um, but just that whole sense of do good, um, help others. I think holiness isn't how many prayers you do, but more so knowing the one who you're praying to. Uh, so it can be as simple as thanking God, like I grew up on a farm, thanking God for uh, a good crop. You know, we had tobacco, which probably isn't the best thing but uh, to grow, but uh, just appreciating what God does in every aspect. Um, I have allergies, but I love flowers, and I could see God in, in the unfolding of the petals and the flowers each each day growing up in the farm and, and the butterflies, and just um, being aware and being co conscious of God's glory. Um, really first is the better way to pray and and to grow in your holiness as opposed to I'm going to just pray, pray, pray. And I'm just, um, of course, being silent and being quiet is, is a gift, but I really think like we have to really know that He's there, that He loves us, that His glory is all around, and then insert yourself. Um, finding support in this journey wasn't necessarily... Um, an easy reality. I think there's, I got a lot of flack from my fraternity. I was a Sigma Chi. I'm, I'm a Sigma Chi in a fraternity. Uh, and they, of course, heckled me and said, yeah, yeah, you're not going to um, have a big job. You're not going to get married. You're not going to have children. Da, da, da. Um, but I wasn't so caught up in that because I was, in my prayer life, I was so excited about God's love. And that's the whole point is like you love God so much you can give your whole life to Him um, and just experience His love through, through, our, through our persons. Um, but my family was sort of, my mom and dad were in their interior were always wanting the best for me, but I don't think they understood the priesthood right away. They were obviously very Catholic, but they didn't say like, okay, go for it. They were like, are you sure you're not going to get married? Are you sure uh, you want to go into college even, you know, get your doctorate or something? Um, so at first they're a little bit reluctant, but at the same time, they always wanted my good. And to this day, they're my, my best friends, and um, they support me 100, 110% is what uh, card they gave me one Christmas after I was like struggling, like, what do I do? Do my parents really understand what I want to do with God and God wants to do with me? And then when I got that card, it was like smooth sailing. I think the challenge of being a priest is realizing who you are and knowing that God is... Great, God's greatness is even able to come through our human weaknesses and and certainly like anyone even if you're married you're going to get lonely and you're going to deal with that but that's that's not the biggest deal at the priesthood actually I think the priesthood challenge is to know that God actually uh, continues to have a plan for you that um, even if you don't feel worthy which sometimes um, we can all have low self-esteem bouts or self-pity parties um, but you have to, I've learned to 
really empower myself and with God's love and believe in that calling. I think that's the, I think the irony is, yes, you may have, you have a calling, but I think the challenge is to really know you've been called. And whatever that means with our human weaknesses and our own struggles and um, needs, that God's got this. And to surrender to that uh, every day um, is when you actually get your strength and your life and your hope and your joy. Um, it's, in, it's only when I say, oh, Norman wants to do this or Norman wants to do that. And I forget, oh gosh, it's a partnership. It's what God wants. And when, when I go into that comfortable mode, that's when I find it to be, struggle to be a priest. So it's a constant surrender, which actually is better. And <laughs> it's more, it's, <laughs> it's when I, when I struggle to, my biggest struggle is when I don't accept my calling and rely on myself. And I think, ah, oh, this is easy, I got this. But when I surrender, that's actually more freeing, and I discover my greatness again in Him.